Once upon a time, I was a rotten, spoiled, ungrateful teenager. I know that sounds almost impossible to believe, you know, those of you who know me. But alas, it is true, I was a spoiled teenager. There's a picture of me, <laughs> top right. Just rolled out of bed for that family photo. <laughs> I was approaching the end of high school, facing my high school graduation, and in my family it had become a, a kind of minor tradition for a student upon graduation to receive some kind of small gift or an heirloom to mark the milestone accomplishment, uh, to receive that as a gift from my parents. And it was my turn. And so I made my desires known. What I wanted from my parents for my graduation was a Swiss Army watch. So they looked into my, my requests and returned to let me know that they just they couldn't afford it. It was just too expensive. So naturally, I threw a fit. Now, you know, because even though, so what, you know, my parents, they gave me life itself and then proceeded to raise me and I guess they, you know, changed my dirty diapers and they fed me every day and they provided shelter and clothing and a warm, loving family life and showered me with a constant stream of affection every day and made countless personal sacrifices. But this was my graduation. I deserve it. So I told them it wasn't fair and, you know, they did it for my older brothers and sisters and it's probably because they don't love me as much as they love them and laid it on thick. Now, eventually, uh, I was successful and I got the Swiss Army watch, whether, or whether it's because uh, a successful guilt trip or maybe they just figured it cost them less to just buy it for me, you know? Spoiled, thankless, ungrateful teenager. Not much, not a whole lot has changed since then, you know. Now we were talking about this sort of phenomenon of gratitude, and thankfulness, or thanklessness. Uh, in a conversation Father Simon and I had recently with a family over dinner, and one of the elders at the table was sort of lamenting of sort of the, the state of the world and how people of this generation, they just don't seem to appreciate all that they've been given. They don't seem to appreciate the uh, sort of endless luxuries and comforts that they have access to, or not, uh, which is very the case that uh, there are comforts that previous generations have only ever dreamed uh, about. And I think it speaks to the culture in which we live, which is so consumer-driven that we're so focused on the things that we don't have that we forget to be thankful about the things that we do have. I was reading a study that talked about uh, one kind of ingratitude uh, called entitlement. They described entitlement as a mindset that may lead to chronic disappointment, unmet expectations, and a habitual self-reinforcing cycle of behavior. Chronic disappointment in unmet expectations. Those are the some of the consequences of ingratitude <laughs> actually rob us of our happiness and our contentment with life. Now, ingratitude and, and uh, entitlement, they can even affect our spiritual lives, our relationship with God. And I'll give you an example from my own life, a place where I discovered it. Uh, if you're anything like me, perhaps you, you send up prayers to God all the time. You know, you pray for this thing and that thing, and you say, Lord, you know, uh, uh, you know this person in my life, they're really struggling. I, I, you know, would you help them or strengthen them? This person's sick, would you heal them? Lord, you know, I'm looking for a new job. Would you help me find a new job? Help me with my financial security or my, my people problems? Or, uh, you know, thank you, God, for my new baby brother, but I prayed for a puppy dog, right? 
We send out prayers like this all the time, constantly, day in and day out. And like me, you probably forget that you even made those prayers. Now, one day I was just reflecting on this, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to write down a list of things that I'm praying for. And I wrote, proceeded to write those down in my prayer journal. And then several months later, uh, I'd promptly forgotten about it, and several months later I was looking through my prayer journal, and I stumbled across that list of things that I've been praying for. And I was surprised to find that almost all of them had received some answer and been resolved. And yet I had never returned back to God to thank Him for answering any of those prayers. And it just kind of spoke to me and made me realize all the time I'm constantly asking God for things and receiving blessing upon blessing, grace upon grace, and how little and infrequently I return just to thank Him. And it's like I miss out on the blessings God is pouring out on me all the time. Now we see a, a kind of similar dynamic at play in the gospel. Jesus, is the, the wonder-working rabbi, his sort of news and reputation had preceded him as he enters this village between Samaria and Galilee. And as he enters the village, ten lepers, they approach him, keeping their distance. They call out to him saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now Jesus, what does he do? He tells them to go show themselves to the priest because it was the priests who were responsible for determining whether or not someone had leprosy. And so they begin to go on their way. And the scripture says, as they went, they were made clean. All ten of them, this miraculous healing of their leprosy, uh, even before they even arrive, they're healed on the way. God in His uh, gratuitous grace and mercy, Jesus, He heals them miraculously. All ten of them received healing from Jesus, but only one returned to thank Him. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And Jesus responds, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Now, if I'm honest with myself, I see myself more in those nine who didn't return to give thanks. I see myself as one among the ungrateful faithful, right? All the lepers, they had faith that Jesus could heal them. But only one returned out of gratitude to thank him for what he did. It's kind of like that joke, you know, there's that man, right? And he's driving around looking for a parking space. He's on his way to an appointment. And uh, it, it's getting late and he starts to kind of panic. Like, man, I got to find a parking spot. I'm going to be late for this really important appointment. And so he cries out to God in desperation. He said, please, God, if you find me a parking spot, I promise to go back to church every single week. And then instantly he sees the parking spot opens up and he zips in there. And then he, he looks up. He says, uh, never mind, God, I found one. He received exactly what he asked for, but he didn't return gratitude where it was due. Now this dynamic, receive and return, to receive from God and return in gratitude, it's a fundamental dynamic of the spiritual life. In fact, the church's whole prayer is a call to continually return to God in thanksgiving for what He has given. The uh, Catholic Catechism says this, 
the Eucharist is a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Father, a blessing by which the church expresses her gratitude to God for all His benefits, for all that He has accomplished through creation, redemption, and sanctification. Eucharist means, first of all, thanksgiving. The church's worship, this whole thing that we do today uh, is this dynamic structure of receive and return. The Eucharist, which is this whole celebration that we do today, is fundamentally an act of thanksgiving to God the Father for all that He has given us and poured out and, 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 and all that we've received from Him. And the church calls us week after week to return to God as we offer everything back to God that He has first given us in and through Jesus, the perfect sacrifice who offers Himself. Where the church's structure of worship is meant to form us into the shape of a people characterized by our gratitude for all that God has given and all that He has done and all that He has yet to do in our lives. The psalmist writes in Psalm 116, What shall I return to the Lord for all His goodness to me? And I think perhaps that's the question to ask ourselves today. On this weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, which is first and foremost about returning to God our thanks for all that He's given us. What shall I return to the Lord for His goodness to me. I'd like to offer two suggestions. I'd like to submit two options or suggestions for your consideration. The first is, as you gather around the dinner table with family or friends, why not take a moment to express your gratitude? What uh, Father Simon taught me this when I've eaten with him at uh, different people's homes, He'll often suggest, you know, let's go around the table and every person share one thing they're thankful to God for from the past year. It's often this beautiful experience as we share the blessings and gifts that God has given us. And there's something that elevates the conversation as, as, as we become filled with joy as we reflect on God's goodness and share together our thanks and gratitude. And so I offer that to you as a suggestion this weekend. The second suggestion comes to us from St. Peter, who says, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering grace in its various forms. You see, one of the fundamental uh, movements of gratitude in our hearts directs us outward to serve, to return God, to God in acts of service, service of Him and others. And that's fundamentally what this preaching series is about, our call to serve. And that at the heart of service is this motivation of gratitude. We always serve from a place of gratitude, never out of compulsion, never out of guilt, but because we are thankful for what we have first received. Now next week, uh, there's all kinds of ways to serve, and next week we're going to have people in the foyer. If you feel moved and you'd like to serve here at St. Benedict, we have all kinds of ways for people to serve in their gifts, uh, all kinds of ways you probably don't even know uh, the different ways you could serve. And uh, if you're new here and, and you don't have, you haven't had the opportunity to serve, we'll be giving uh, that opportunity in the foyer after Mass next week for anyone uh, who'd like to to make uh, even a couple hours a month uh, to serve here at the church. Now, sometimes people ask me, hey, Father Alex, why did you become a priest? Now, that's a kind of long story, and I don't want to get into all the details. We don't have time for that today. Uh, but I think fundamentally what they're asking is, like, like what's the motivation? Why? And I'll tell you this, uh, choosing to become a priest wasn't the consequence of some decision based on a, a rational analysis of the pros and cons, right? 
Like, I, I never sat down and said, you know, like, hmm, pro, working with amazing people. Con, working with Father Simon. <laughs> Con, celibacy. Pro, celibacy. <laughs> it was in a moment of prayer when I was sitting before God and I was reflecting on all the, the ways God had blessed me and moved in my life. I was reflecting on uh, kind of the person that I was before I encountered Jesus and the person I had become. And I was reflecting upon how Jesus had entered into my life. He had broken into my life and revealed his love to me in a way that transformed the whole direction and trajectory of my life. And I was reflecting on all the ways he had blessed me and given me grace and given me a, a loving family and showered his affection upon me. And I was moved to gratitude for what he had done to me, for me. And the question I asked myself was this, what shall I return to the Lord for his goodness to me? You see, what could I possibly give to God in return for the unmerited free gift of his love for me? And the answer, the only sane answer, was myself, my life, my life in service to him and his people. And that's the truth for all of us if we take any amount of time to really reflect on it and pray about it. Whether you be a mother or a father, a husband or a wife, whether you are single or a priest or a religious sister, the fact of the matter is that all of us are called to give our whole lives in return to God for the good that he has first shown us. And in a me-centric world, we are desperate for witnesses, men and women who live and serve God out of his, out of, because of his goodness. In a world that's so focused on the things that we don't have, that we miss out on the things that we do have and the gifts and blessings and graces that God pours out on us every single day, the world is desperate for men and women who will give a joyful witness of generosity responding to God in gratitude with their whole lives. The world needs you and your response to God. And so the question for us today is, what shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me?